Hello everyone, this is Vortex, and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. In our last episode, the Light Warriors delved through the remainder of the Cavern of Earth and brought justice to the Fiend of Earth, otherwise known as Lich, who was responsible for the Earth's decay. Upon Lich's defeat, the Light Warriors were able to relight the Crystal of Earth and begin the healing process to the land. Now if you go into your menu, you'll see that the Earth Crystal has been lit up there in your Crystal List. So one down and three to go. So even though they have scored a victory here, there's still quite a journey that awaits our heroes as they still have the Fire, Water, and Wind Crystals left to restore. Also, if you go into your bestiary, you'll find a new entry waiting for you at number 49. There's the entry for the Fiend of Earth Lich, who had 1,200 HP. And if you're really lucky, you got a dry ether as a drop from Lich. I believe that restores a whole bunch of MP. Again, since Lich is undead, its weakness is Fire and Dia, resistant to just about everything else. So there you have it. So we are now 24% complete with the bestiary, nearly a quarter of the way done. Now if you go back into Melman, uh, the villagers there will be very grateful for your efforts and they will tell you that the earth is starting to heal. So now it's time to begin the journey to restore the next crystal. So where do we go from here? Well, it's actually time for us to go in search of the Prophet Lucon whose hometown is Cornelia. We heard that he left the village in search of the Crescent. So just where can we find this Crescent at? Well, let's go ahead and pull up the map here. I'm gonna press B select. And we're currently situated right next to the village of Melmond. Actually, we don't have to go too terribly far. What we're going to do is get in our ship and sail around the Devil's Tail Peninsula here that houses the Cavern of Earth. And we're gonna continue sailing west until we hit a port on a brand new continent here. And we're just gonna kinda traipse around here until we find a lake in the shape of a crescent. And there's a village right there. That's our next destination. And we're gonna go ahead and get in our ship here and head that way. Now, before we get started here, Today's episode has the potential to be a little bit interesting. I'll go ahead and warn you now that there is a small chance that my doorbell could ring sometime during this episode. You see, I'm actually expecting a package from UPS today. I recently ordered a PlayStation 3. Yep, that's right. I'm probably one of the few gamers left in the world who doesn't have one, but when they recently lowered their price, I decided to go ahead and go for it. So. I'm pretty excited about that. So if the doorbell rings, that probably means my new PS3 is here. Either that or it means there's a Jehovah's Witness or magazine salesman at the door. So we'll see which one it is. So anyhow, I just wanted to uh, throw that out there and let you know. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start sailing here go around the Devil's Tail Peninsula right here. And from here, we'll just keep sailing to the west. And we'll eventually hit a port before too long. It's pretty easy to get lost, so check your map occasionally. Uh, looks like I'm uh, not too terribly far away from it. Hmm, I'm already here. How about that? And I didn't have to worry about any sea monster attacks. How about that? That's pretty rare. All right, well, let's head to the west from here. And let's fight a battle with a new enemy called the Ankeg, or Ankeg. And as you can see, it's a centipede type monster, and it has the potential to poison you with its physical attack, I believe. Oh, let's see, otherwise it looks like it has about 222 HP. Doesn't look like it has any notable weaknesses and wow BB's already down to 46 HP down there so I'm gonna have Lena cure him up and I guess I'll have VV cast the Blazara spell on these oh no five HP left oh no 
I hope BB doesn't die here. Oh, good. Lena got the Cura spell in time there. Looks like Cloud got poisoned. And there's Lazara. Knocking out one of them. Two left to go here. So I guess I can have Lena try to uh, cure Cloud's poison there. And uh, just use the Cura spell on these other two here. They should be falling here pretty shortly. Okay, good. There's the Poisona spell in action, and it looks like Locke is going to take care of that last overgrown bug there. And we get 895 experience points and 900 gil for our efforts, and a brand new entry in the bestiary. So let's scroll down here to find the entry for the Onkeg at number 50 in the list. And there you go. As you can see, we're now 25% complete with the bestiary. That takes us a quarter of the way done there. Very nice. All right, let's continue making tracks. Let's head through the forest here to the west. And it looks like we have arrived at the crescent-shaped lake. Well, that was a battle with a couple of those menacing, noise-hating trolls. Nothing the Light Warriors couldn't handle. Continuing to make the way around the crescent here. And we're nearly home free. Looky there, there's a village. Let's go check it out. Okay, I believe this is another new monster I have not fought yet. Battle with three scorpions along with six anacondas. Now, there's a chance you might have run into the scorpions already back in the marsh cave. I just never did run into them there, but as you can see they're pretty annoying because they can poison you. So, looks like Lena gets to fire up her Poisona spell again for Cloud. And, uh, let's see, how about some Faraga this time, just to demonstrate my angst towards these monsters. How dare you poison Cloud! Take this, boom, and Vivi easily dispatches all of those monsters, and we get 416 experience, 510 gil, looks like Lena never did get her Poisona out in time, uh oh, did I use that twice? Oh well, it matters not, let's go inside the village here, and we will find that this is the village of Crescent Lake. Doesn't look like there are too many people around town at this point in time. So let's see, well it looks like we've got an armor shop here so let's go ahead and go inside here and see what armors are available for sale. Well you can purchase a mithril mail, a mithril shield, and look at that, there is a shield available for my thief lock. It's called a buckler and it only costs 2,000 gil, so I'm going to purchase one of those. Looks like Cloud is already equipped with the mithril helm and there's some mithril gloves also available for sale here for 2,000 gil, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up one of those. Let's go ahead and equip those. Replace those steel gloves and the mithril gloves will take your defense up two points and also your evasion will go up two points. Very nice. So not quite as heavy as those steel gloves. And looks like Locke is going to be equipped with his first shield here, the buckler. That will take his defense up two points to 19. So a couple of good buys there. And hey, there's somebody. Young lady walking around in the graveyard. She says, my husband is always traveling. And in the little time he is home, he sleeps all day. I think he needs to get his priorities straight. Well, I can understand him sleeping all day. At least I can relate because I work a lot of nights. But I suppose the wife doesn't like that. Well, we've got a couple of magic shops here. Let's go ahead and check these out. You can purchase level six magic in these shops and in the white magic shop you can purchase the stona spell which cures stone exit is only usable by the red and white wizards 
and you get the class change a little bit later in the game, so it doesn't look like Lena can use that yet, but if she ever becomes a white wizard, she will be able to purchase the exit spell, which will transport the party out of dungeons. There's a spell called Protira. Basically, it's like a Protect 2 spell, I think. It raises the party's defense. And then there's the Invisera spell, kind of like an Invis 2, which raises the party's evasion. Now, notice that Lena can't purchase these yet because she's not high enough in level. She has not learned the ability to use level 6 magic yet. So I'm going to have to level up a bit more before I can come back and purchase those spells. And likewise, it's going to be the same for Vivi, I believe. But let's go ahead and take a look at the level 6 black magic here. You can purchase Thundaga, which uh, does a lot of lightning damage. There's the death spell. Instantly kills one foe. Quake will call an earthquake to swallow foes. And there's the stun spell, which paralyzes one foe, so that doesn't seem like it would be too useful. But here in Crescent Lake, you can find the level 6 white and black magic shops. And there's also an item shop in the southwestern corner of town. I may stop by there and stock up on stuff before we leave town here in a bit. And there is also a weapon shop here too, so let's go ahead and check it out. You can purchase mithril weapons in this shop. There's the mithril knife. And finally we find the mithril sword. Now that's the sword that used to be available back in Elfheim in older versions of Final Fantasy, but uh, they took it out here for the Dawn of Souls version. I'm not sure about the PSP or the uh, future iOS versions of Final Fantasy, but at least here in the Dawn of Souls version, you have to wait to uh, get to uh, Crescent Lake here before you can purchase it. Now, you can also purchase a Mithril Axe for your warrior there as well. The only difference is the Mithril Axe will take your accuracy down more than your Mithril Sword will, but it will have a higher attack power, so you have to decide whether you want more accuracy or more attack power. Really doesn't matter to me. I've always liked the Mithril Sword, plus it's a little bit cheaper, so I'm going to go ahead and purchase one of those for Cloud. And I don't have to worry about the Mithril Hammer because Lena is already equipped with that. So let's go ahead and put that Mithril Sword on Cloud. Replace his Rune Blade there, but we'll keep it in our inventory in case we want to use it. But as you can see, it will take his attack up five points. 34 and looks like his accuracy stays the same all right let's continue exploring the town here another small graveyard I guess there's been a lot of deaths here this young man is kind of lazing about next to this gravestone here and looks like he's sound asleep so this must be the man that the lady was looking for who's always sleeping during the day Hopefully he'll wake up later and he'll have some useful info for us. So, Well, let's go through the magic shops here and cross this bridge here and go on the back side of the town. It looks like some old men are having a special meeting back here. Some sort of secret conclave, maybe? What's this all about? Well, we've got a circle of wise men here. So let's talk to them. Let's start with this elder right here. And he says, Twelve sages are we, guided to this land by the stars and prophecy. All right, so we have found the twelve sages back here. So this must be the circle of sages. So let's just go through and talk with each one of them. This old man says, Four great crystals exist in this world. The light that once shone within them is now lost. Well, that's not completely true anymore because the earth crystal now has its light back. The old man says the four fiends of chaos blocked the power of the crystals, claiming it as their own. Okay, so there must be four fiends. We've already fought one of them, Lich. Sounds like there are three more waiting in the wings for the light warriors. This man says, fire, earth, water, and wind. These are the four forces that compose our world. Four elements. This old man says, the source of the four forces are the altars scattered throughout the world. Defeat the fiends that have taken root there and lift up the crystal you carry to the altar. 
the crystal should regain its brilliance. All right, well, we've already been exposed to that with the earth crystal, and now that that's relit, we know how to go through the process with the other three. The four fiends plot to rule the world, both past and present. The fiend of wind appeared 400 years ago, followed 200 years later by the fiend of water. Together they laid waste to the civilization in the north. Oh, well, we've already heard about that advanced civilization in the north, but it sounds like the fiends have taken care of that. It must be lying in ruins now. And it sounds like the fiends have been around a while, especially that fiend of wind who's been around for at least 400 years. This man says the fiend of earth rots the land. And this old man says where the fiend of fire passes, all is cast into flame. So we've got a fiend of earth, fiend of fire, fiend of water, and fiend of wind it sounds like. When all four crystals shine once more, return here. All will be revealed. Okay, well keep that in the back of your mind folks. If you get all four of those crystals restored, you'll need to come back here and get the rest of the story as Paul Harvey would say. This old man says, bring the light of the four crystals to us. Warriors of light, only you can do this. Because you're the heroes of the world. Alright, this old man has an important piece of information for us. The volcano Mount Golg rises to the west of this town. The fiend of fire long slept within its passages, but she has awoken 200 years before her time. Vanquish her before the world is consumed in flames. So it sounds like the fiend of fire is a female, and it sounds like she resides in Mount Golg to the west of here. Sounds like that may be our next destination. And this old man says, well done, warriors of light. You have defeated the fiend of earth and restored the crystal's light. Sadly, this has drawn the notice of the fiend of fire who was not to have stirred for another 200 years. Take this canoe and go face the fiend in Mount Gold. All right, so we get a new key item, the canoe, which will allow us to cross lakes and rivers. And that is now available in our key items list. And there it is right there, a small boat for crossing lakes and rivers. So we can now make headway to Mount Gold to deliver justice to the Fiend of Fire. And here, this gentleman is dressed in different wardrobe. And we find that this is the sage Lucan who left Cornelia to come to Crescent Lake. He says, I see a cycle of wrath, a dim light guided by destiny, that about which our entire future revolves. Hmm, so it looks like he's having a vision there. All right, well, we have talked to the 12 sages, and we have found that there are more fiends waiting to lay waste to this world. Sounds like we need to go after the Fiend of Fire next, and that's what we're going to do in our next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. What I'll probably do between now and then is stock up on items there in the item shop and stay at the inn and then we'll pick up from here next time and darn the luck my doorbell still has not rung yet come on UPS guy I'm ready for my PS3 <laughs> thank you so much for watching today's episode everyone I hope you enjoyed it this has been Vortex your host have a great day we'll see you again next time